All trains are running on schedule. Thank you. Yeah? What do you want? I have a question for you. Have you ever heard of someone called the Angel of Valhalla? You must be new to these parts. There's not a man or woman here that doesn't know the Angel. The Angel of Valhalla isn't a person. It's a legendary chocobo, covered in feathers as white as the clouds. It's the sacred bird that only appears at the end of the world. So it's a local legend, then? Yeah, a legend. At least that's what it used to be. But in recent times, many folk have seen the bird with their own two eyes. A lot of us are thinking maybe that story is true. Maybe it is, but Dr. Ghazal has been after it for years, and he still doesn't have proof that the beast is the one from legend. Dr. Ghazal? Who would that be? The famous veterinarian, of course. A prickly character with the temper of a behemoth, but he loves his chocobos. When it comes to the angel, he's the leading expert in all of the wildlands. The doctor lives up the road a bit, in the village of Canopus Farms. If you catch him in a good mood, he'll help you out. Um, maybe. A white chocobo at the end of the world. There's nothing about this in any of the official scriptures of the Order. It's a local story, a superstition. Even if it is, someone spoke to me. The voice was real, and it mentioned the Angel of Valhalla. I want to know who it was. If you think that's what you need to do, then go ahead. You have a lead, at least. Right. You aren't from around here, are you? I suppose you've come to seek the wisdom of our famous Dr. Ghazal. <laughs> I wanted to ask him about the Angel of Valhalla. I knew it. Well, first things first. You have heard of our Chocobo legend, right? You mean, the one about a sacred white chocobo that appears at the end of the world? That's the one. Some of us call that chocobo the Angel of Salvation. Oh, how we've been praying for him to appear. The Angel is a harbinger, a signal that it's over at last. That's something to pray for? Oh yes. For the people who live out here, death is a kind of salvation. An outsider like you must find it difficult to understand. Five centuries ago, all hell broke loose and a new god took over. We became immortal, against all natural laws. See, the people out here don't like that. Even gods shouldn't be allowed to change the natural order of things. Living off the land, growing our own food, surviving by our own wits, and dying when our time is up. That's what we want. And that's why the white chocobo is a good thing. It means this unnatural life is gonna be over at last. Right? <laughs> but you're welcome to believe different. We don't push our creed on anyone. At the same time, as long as you're going to be visiting us here for a while, it's right that you know our ways. For the people of the Wildlands, the White Chocobo is a sign. A herald of a special kind of salvation. Many in these lands worship Etra, the goddess of death. They pray to eventually return to her side, which in their creed is the same as ceasing to exist. Dr. Ghazal of Canopus Farms. Hello there, stranger. Welcome to Canopus Farms. My name's Garrett. Guess you could say I run things around here. What can we do for you? I've come to talk to your vet, Dr. Ghazal. Ah, got it. You want to know about the Angel of Valhalla, right? Well, Dr. Ghazal's your man. Yeah, well, that's what everyone tells me. He's been chasing the white chocobo for over a century now. No one comes close to his passion and expertise. It's all he cares about since his daughter died. What is it? Ah, oh, damn. I shouldn't have said anything about his daughter. It's not a secret or anything, but he really hates anybody talking about it. The doctor first came out here with his daughter. They planned to learn about the legend together. 
But about a century ago, she was killed while they were both out tracking chocobos. It was tragic. The doctor never really told the whole story of what happened. But after that, he threw himself even deeper into his research and work. Soon, it was all he cared about. But listen, promise me one thing, okay? I won't let on that you told me. Don't worry. Thanks. I'd appreciate it. I mean, everyone around these parts knows the story, of course. But he wouldn't like it if strangers started asking about his past. Anyway, if you're interested in seeing the legendary Chocobo for yourself, Dr. Gazal is the man you have to talk to. They say he's seen the Angel of Valhalla more than a few times. At least a Chocobo that looks just like him. Sounds like he could help. I bet my hunting bow on it. Well, may nature bless you. What do you mean? Uh, it's just a saying we have out here in the Wildlands. It means good luck. By all accounts, he's a difficult man to deal with. But no one knows more about Chocobos. What do you want? I want to know more about the Angel of Valhalla. Go ahead. I heard you know things. The encounter is ordained. You have been led to the fountainhead whence the chaos flows. Does that mean anything to you? Great Etro's helm. Where did you hear those words? Who spoke them? A young girl. But I never saw her. A maiden's voice, born on the wind. Yes. Yes, that's how I heard them, too. So it would appear that she has spoken to both of us. Very well. I will share what I know. The angel is a tempestuous chocobo that lives in these plains. I myself have glimpsed the creature many times, but unfortunately I've never succeeded in capturing him. It is said whoever can break him and ride him will become his master. But I've long since given up hope that it shall be me. Nor me. I don't know anything about chocobos. Don't rule yourself out, young lady. You may be the one. If you're telling the truth about the voice, that is. It's true, not everyone who hears the voice is the chosen one. But rest assured, the encounter will happen. The legends tell us that the Chocobo's chosen master will be led by the Chocobo to a certain place. I speak of that dread edifice whence the chaos emerges, the Temple of Etro herself. You mean the one built into the cliff? The very same. And deep below that sinister haven of destruction, an ocean of chaos royals, the great chaos of the stories. Hmm, what does that mean? Is it a different kind of chaos? Alas, the legends give us few details. If you wish to find an answer to that question, you will have to seek the truth in the temple. And to do that, I've got to find and tame the Angel of Valhalla. Yes, indeed. But that, let me assure you, is no easy task. I have a couple of assistants who live here in the village. Talk to them, and they can give you advice about finding the Chocobo. An ocean of great chaos buried beneath a temple. Do you think it could be true? Does the Order know anything about it? No. I'd say it's likely they don't. That temple appeared here from the other world, from Valhalla itself. When it still stood in Valhalla, it was responsible for sealing away a power, the one that now consumes the world. Hey there! Can I help you with something today? the chaos we see now, but it seems to have been dormant since then, and no one knows why. Hi. What do you need today? A great city was once built here. 
For a while, it was the center of all human culture. It appears the ruins here are all that remain of that time. So was that our golden age? Well, judging by the state of them, it ended a long time ago. The chaos that's destroying the world emerged right here in the wildlands. The initial flood of chaos devastated this entire area. So this is where it began. The beginning of the end. friend. These lands are filled with dangerous beasts. What's more, a chocobo eater rampages in the east. If a chocobo predator's out there, there must be chocobos too. Oh. So, you were seeking the wild chocobo. Normally, I would warn city folk from such folly, but you look capable enough. But know if you find yourself in trouble. Return quickly to the high road. My people are there and will help. Chaos beneath the temple of the goddess. What do you think? 
I hope that I'm wrong about this, but I'd say that the force behind the world's destruction might be buried somewhere in that temple. The unseen chaos. I came into contact with it not just once. I still remember the feeling. You think you can win? Let's see. not something that belonged in this world. It had to be stopped and destroyed. But I wasn't strong enough to stop it. The cave. It's the white chocobo. I found it. He's injured. You have to help him. You bet your life, I bet mine. <laughs> just run away. He's torn up pretty bad. Perhaps he had to fight to protect something. It's all right, little one. I'll help you. You're bleeding heavily. We have to stop it. Uh. <sighs> it's the white chocobo. What happened here? He needs medical attention, and fast. Right. I'll get the doctor. Yeah! Yep! Yeah.
It's even worse than I feared. Hey, help me get him to Canopus Farms, now! Yes, sir. I won't let him die. Of that you have the word of Dr. Gizal. Stop okay, moving around! Quickly! Hey, Hope. Do you really think that was a chocobo? Why do you ask? It might be a subspecies, but it certainly looked like a chocobo to me. Right. To me, too. But the thing is, when I first saw it, I felt this weird familiarity. You felt familiar with a chocobo? Maybe you just need a friend, Light. Hey, I know what I felt. I'll follow the dock back to Canopus Farms. I'm sorry. Dr. Gazal's in surgery right now and can't be disturbed. You'll have to wait Give here. Give me some fresh water. Yeah. Okay, good. As I stood there, watching the doctor try to save the Chocobo's life, I knew this was no ordinary animal. Because of the legend, I felt a connection, as if we'd fought together. There. There, that's it. But 
Why? It made no sense. Come see for yourself. Light, what about the Chocobo? Do you want to leave without seeing how it's doing? I beg of you. Is he all right? His wounds are cleaned and dressed, but he's still dying. Can't you help? Listen to me. He's half-starved. If he is to recover, he needs nutrients, vitamins, protein. But no matter what we do, we can't make him eat. Is he that weak? It's not a question of being weak. He's too proud. That's the problem. We've tried everything to coax him, but he simply won't accept any food from humans. And the fool beast just glares at us. That pride will kill him. Such a stubborn bird can be none other than the Angel of Valhalla. The only human the Angel will bow to is the one he recognizes as Master. Perhaps he will obey you. Try it. Offer him this. Light. It might be the Chocobo's only hope. Try giving him that vegetable. Is this all right? Well, it looks like he recognizes you as his master. As long as we keep providing him with feed, he should recover. I say we, but of course I mean you. He will not accept help from anyone else. He has to be your responsibility and yours alone. If I do it, will he recover? I would bet my reputation on it. This is the bird of legend. You're destined to ride him to the fountainhead of the chaos. But before you can do that, the bird needs to be fed. So you said. Any hints? What kind of food should I give him? I prescribe a balanced diet of gazal greens, quality sheep's milk, and nutritional supplements. Ask the villagers if they have any greens or milk to spare. Chocobo is out of immediate danger, but he needs more treatment before he's fully recovered. So now I have to play nurse to a giant bird. I'm telling you, it better be worth the trouble. He'll become your steed. And not only that, if the legends are true, he'll be able to guide you to the temple of the goddess and the source of the great chaos. Hey, hey, don't step on the vegetables. Sorry. I didn't mean to... It's all right. No harm done. I was only warning you. I've just planted a whole crop of gazal seedlings. Right. Chocobo's favorite food. Yep. And our bread and butter. My name is Sarala, by the way. This is our field. My father's and mine. We've always worked it together. Nice to meet you and everything. You should feed that white chocobo of yours with some gazal greens. Normally we have a full crop, but with Father away I have no fertilizer to grow more. That's the last one, but you can have it. We'll see. He'd better be useful. I was never one for keeping pets. Somehow, that doesn't surprise me. So, what are you going to do next? Oh, you should eat. A bunch of fuss buckets, aren't they? The villagers, I mean. Everyone's been very kind and helpful. Well, you have to be out here in the wildlands. No one who tries going it alone survives very long. Just remember, if someone scratches your back, they'll expect some back scratching in return.